Hi everyone, Peter here from Movement and Performance, and this is going to be a personal case study of mine on low back pain with Olympic weightlifting. So essentially I'm going to go through the entire process of how um, I developed low back pain during my Olympic weightlifting training, and then how I overcame this, uh, how I'd continue to train firstly, and then overcame the pain. So firstly, quick disclaimer, um, this is not medical advice, I am not uh, nor am I qualified as a medical professional. I'm simply reviewing the process of what happened to me and what I did to help myself so that maybe this could um, give some practical advice for um, others who may potentially be going through the same thing. But this is not uh, medical advice in any way. So, uh, to start, the cause of the pain, how did I develop this back pain? Um, essentially, I did a competition in November 2017. Um, and this wasn't a competition I was uh, going to peak uh, all out for. I was not planning to be at my best for this competition. It was just a, um, an open comp. It was nothing important. And essentially, after this competition, because leading to that competition, I um, basically was lifting quite heavy because I still wanted to be able to um, lift some decent weights, um, even though I wasn't going to be at 100%. So essentially, after that competition, I was I decided to sort of try a new training style, whereby um, whereby I used the certain exercises to dictate the uh, the load on the bar rather than actually prescribing specific intensities. And I wasn't planning; I didn't plan to actually be continue to go really heavy like um, in a traditional periodization in a traditional periodization scheme where um, generally after the an intense competition or something you would um, lower the low lower the intensity and then start accumulating volume which was my plan however during the exercises i was doing i managed to um, get quite strong quite quickly I adapted really well to these to these uh, lifts and I was actually still lifting, um, starting to hit 90% plus on my lifts in these exercises. So essentially what happened was I continued to lift heavy loads without actually much of a break after the competition. So prolonged 90% uh, plus lifting. So leading into the comp and then continuing up that after the competition. Which is something I had not actually done before, even though it wasn't intentional. So essentially after that um, prolonged... Uh, heavy lifting, I started to develop some low back pain and also uh, knee pain, but I'll outline that in another video. Uh, but that happened at the same time and it slowly emerged and essentially it didn't get worse, but it just did not really uh, subside. And there was no signs of poor movement, so from my own video footage analyzing my movement, there was no um, incorrect movements that that I recognize that could potentially lead to um, any injuries or uh, back issues. So the nature of the pain was that it was, it was not a lot of pain, it was very low pain levels, but it was more dull and constant as opposed to um, sharp and during particular times. So the, it felt the worst in the morning upon waking. Um, and those symptoms, so the pain was also apparent with uh, certain exercises that had vertical loading. So anything basically that loaded the spine from top to bottom and compressed it, that's what uh, caused pain. So from that, I'm not going to diagnose anything, but it was probably from how I see it, more of a probably a bone or a disc issue uh, injury rather than something that's muscular. So it wasn't flaring up or it wasn't um, relieved with um, with massage or any of that sort of thing, it was more apparent with vertical loading, even with a completely braced torso, um, that's, it was still apparent, and it was, it was more constant. So, training contraindicators, so things that actually, uh, hurt, basically, in my training. So, vertical loading, as I mentioned, was the main thing that hurt. So front and back squats caused the worst pain. Not that it was bad, but they, um, they caused those symptoms more than any other exercise. Um, probably because of the 
heavier loads I could do with front and back squats as opposed to um, other other movements. So that directly loaded it vertically and was the heaviest loads. So also other exercises, snatches, cleans, jerks, and push press, all of those were the same that loaded the spine vertically. So from top to bottom with compression um, caused some sort of pain, at least initially. So there was no pain with um, horizontal loading though. So that actually relieved the symptoms so it actually made it feel better. So if I did things like um, back extensions or planks or something like a hip thrust, anything that loaded, uh, that didn't load my spine vertically actually felt quite good and didn't cause any pain. So what did I do in my training to work around this injury? Uh, basically, I reduced those vertical loading as much as I possibly could. However, there is a threshold that I could still manage to do uh, with vertical loading. Um, before I actually sort of the, the pain got worse and worse over time, not not acutely, but more over uh, a week or two. So if I actually backed off um, all my vertical loading to a point, it would the pain would still be relieving over time. So basically, because the Olympic lifts were the priority, I kept them in. Um, they're the only vertical loading exercise that I kept in at around 70% is what I could manage and then I slowly increased every um, every four to five weeks I, I slowly increased five to ten percent on those Olympic lifts and then in terms of like squatting I basically did um, leg press instead of squatting because that has no load on the back but it still um, can use the legs in the squatting movement and then I replaced pulls with um, partial pulls so any sort of deadlift or uh, snatch or clean pull, I replaced that with partial pulls. So just from the floor up to the knee. And that was um, that didn't cause any pain because there was no real vertical loading in those positions. But the further I went up, it would cause pain. I also included a lot of isometric trunk um, strength exercises. So both in flexion and extension. So a lot of uh, back extensions and some overloaded isometric back, back extensions, and then also things like planks and ab wheels uh, for the anterior core felt really good. So I did a lot of that to help uh, build some, some trunk stability and trunk strength. In terms of additional treatments, um, so unsuccessfully that didn't actually do anything were things like self-massage and then trying to do some functional core stability training didn't help at all. Um, so I tried doing specific overhead squatting um, with breathing and that sort of thing and that didn't really help at all. Self-massage in my sort of erector spinae and uh, quadratus lumborum didn't help, didn't seem to help at all. But what did really help additionally to my training modifications was doing some anything with low back traction. So anything that caused this sort of, um, basically, the opposite of compression on my lower back felt really good. So I put this picture in here per, uh, particularly because this is a reverse hyper. I've never really been a fan of um, this machine, but for this particular um, for this particular injury, this was a really good exercise. Not so much actually doing the exercise, but more this position that she's in right now where she's pulling with her arms which is creating some forward motion there at her at her spine and then basically her legs are locked in in here so that's pulling basically her legs down and pulling her her lower back and her pelvis uh, down as well so it's creating some traction in the low back there and just simply doing that and breathing into the abdominal area and breathing out felt really good. It felt like it was stretching everything out. And that actually caused a lot of uh, temporary relief. And I performed that basically any time I felt the symptoms, so especially in the morning, um, I would perform this sort of um, uh, this sort of drill. So basically the take home points uh, for this presentation are that, so you can have sudden changes in volume or intensity 
um, which can cause overuse injuries, which is essentially what happened, or I'm suspecting what happened. And if your tissue, so basically if your tissues haven't adapted to that sort of loading, sudden, that's when the sudden changes are going to um, basically cause issues. So with the recovery process, make sure you're patient. This whole process here was quite simple, the modifications, but it took around five months to actually, actually recover. Um, and I'm st I still actually have some very mild symptoms every now and then. Um, however, it's definitely um, almost re completely relieved. But basically, you got to be make sure you're patient and um, make sure you're using your training to focus on things that you can do. So, yeah, so use your training to focus on things that you've neglected or maybe haven't done before so that you can still progress and get better um, rather than just thinking that you're doing nothing. You can always find some sort of modifications in your training and your exercises to make sure you're still progressing. And the modif modifications you do, make sure they don't aggravate your symptoms or make them any worse. And then additionally, try and find some sort of treatments that may relieve pain, even if it's temporary. Um, not that you should temporarily leave pain and then continue to do the, um, to continue to um, push the training and doing exercise that you shouldn't be doing, but make sure additionally to doing, um, to modifying your training, you find treatments that, that can just help you relieve pain temporarily. And then also lastly, and probably most importantly, see a medical professional if you're not getting any relief. And, or if you just want to have a quicker recovery, a medical professional will be able to um, do this quicker for you and be more efficient at the process and know exactly what to do. And if you're gonna see a medical professional, try and pr preferably see someone with some sort of like practical experience. So if you go on clinicalathlete.com, um, that's a website set up to get practitioners who actually have um, experience, practical sport experience. So they're not just um, basically someone with a qualification who's never done any sport. So they can actually um, have, em uh, em have empathy for you and um, basically understand that um, you're trying to get back to your sport rather than just trying to be able to walk around the house. Thanks for watching, guys. That's all for this presentation. Uh, you can follow Movement and Performance on Facebook and on Instagram with the links below in the description. Um, and if you haven't already, you can subscribe on YouTube for more informative videos and the latest content. So on Facebook and Instagram, you'll find these research infographics, which are essentially um, the latest research in sports performance training. And they're simplified into these um, pictures uh, so that it makes all the research easy to understand. So if you're interested in staying up to date with uh, the latest research in sports performance training without actually having to go into the uh, into the journals, then you can you might want to check these out on the Movement and Performance uh, Instagram and Facebook page. Thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully this helped in some way.